Hey everybody, it is a beautiful day outside and today we are going to be reading chapter 11 in our schooled novel. Um, look at the shirt, isn't this so cute? Slay all day. I have to say that you guys are certainly slaying every day of this online schooling. Anyways, I just thought, oh, that's so cute. So I'm happy to have you guys here. Hopefully you're enjoying these recordings. Schooled, chapter 11, page 70, page 70. So grab your book um, and let's get started. Chapter 11 is Hugh Winkleman. You know, when we were in class, I usually tell you, oh, this chapter is a little sad or oh, this chapter makes me cry or oh, I love this chapter. This is one of those, I love this chapters. Um, so hopefully you guys will like this one too. Here we go, chapter 11. Hugh Winkleman. This was shaping up into the greatest school year ever. True, my grades were no better than usual, straight A's, and I still couldn't climb the ropes in gym. I was laying waste to the competition in the chess club, but that always happened. I wasn't popular or even borderline acceptable but I had something going for me that was pure gold. I was anonymous. That may not sound much like much, but to me, it was my birthday, Christmas, and the 4th of July all wrapped into one. No longer did I feel the ridiculing eyes boring into me as I walked the halls of C average. Those eyes bored elsewhere. No longer did I have to watch my step for the feet that would trip or kick me those feet were otherwise engaged. I could barely remember my last wedgie. And it was all thanks to Cap Anderson. I really liked Cap. Really, I did. But I'd be less than honest if I didn't admit that the best thing about him was the fact that he took the heat off me. I was allowed to live because the pack was in full cry after him. So I was happy, but also guilty for being happy. And the happier I got, the more the guilt spoiled my happiness. Of all the guff I'd taken from Zach Powers over the years, this had to be the worst. That I was feeling bad for something he was doing? My only crime was benefiting from it. It wasn't like I could have helped Cap. If I had the power to control Zach, Lena, Daryl, and those vipers, then I wouldn't be a victim. Victims have no power. That's what makes us victims. Anyway, this had gone far beyond just Zach's crew. It was the Luke Samard thing all over again. A wide scale war of little attacks on Cap. The school bus was the bloodiest battlefield. In the building itself, there was a degree of order because there were teachers around. But on the bus, the only authority was the driver, Mr. Rodrigo. And he wasn't exactly the kind of deputy you listened to. He was older and standoffish. He kept his eyes on the road because if he checked the mirror, he might see something. We could have held a luau on that bus with a roast pig and hula dancers, and he would have been none the wiser. The first projectile came sailing up the aisle, spinning like a miniature torch. The Winkleman Encyclopedia of Bullying Techniques identified it instantly. A bunch of jerks at the back were flicking lit matches at cap. I brushed it from my seat, genuinely alarmed. This may have been business as usual in my life, but I had short hair. Cap's flyaway mop was a forest fire waiting to happen. Another flickering shot bounced off the armrest and it extinguished itself on the floor. Cap, I whispered urgently, duck. He looked up, mystified. Why? And at that very instant, Mr. Rodrigo let out a loud groan, clutched his chest, and toppled out of his seat. The ruckus clamor of the bus died as if someone had pulled the plug. Was Mr. Rodrigo having a heart attack? We were so frozen, frozen with shock, nobody noticed that the bus was moving, inching forward into oncoming traffic. Hey! Cap shoved me out of the way and hit the floor running. He leaped over Mr. Rodrigo's still form and landed in the driver's seat, stomping on the accelerator. 
With a roar of the big motor, the bus lurched through the intersection, missing a dump truck by inches. Where's the hospital? Cap barked over his shoulder. We all sat there like dummies, scared out of our wits. The hospital, Cap repeated, now! Suddenly, Naomi was sprinting up the aisle. Turn here! It took all Cap's wingspan to move the huge steering wheel, swinging the bus into a tight right and speeding off down the street. I found my voice at last. But Cap, you can't drive a bus, which was maybe the stupidest remark that could have been made because that's exactly what he was doing. He shifted gears and we picked up speed. What a sight we must have been, a giant speeding yellow school bus weaving in and out of traffic, horn blasting. Turn left, bawled Naomi. Cap heaved on the wheel. The tires, the front tires bounced over a low concrete medium, jostling passengers and rattling windows. A painful screech of metal on cement raked our ears as the chassis bottomed out. I thought we were hung up for sure, but the bus sprang forward and jolted back onto the road. I scrambled on all fours down the aisle, maneuvering around kids who had been tossed out of their seats. Mr. Rodriguez's face was pale, but his chest was moving up and down. He's still breathing, I called to Cap. All at once, the radio burst to life. Face to 41, crackled the dispatcher's voice. Come in, 41. Cap looked at the set as if he'd never seen one in his life, which he probably hadn't. I reached around him and took hold of the microphone. Hello? Rodrigo, is that you? We just got a report that you're way off course and driving erratically. What's going on? Uh, Mr. Rodrigo can't come to the phone, I began. Who is this? The dispatcher demanded. Hugh Winkleman? Who? A passenger! Mr. Rodrigo's unconscious! We think he might be having a heart attack! Who's driving the bus? I hesitated. Capricorn Anderson? Stop right there! The voice ordered. We'll send an ambulance for the driver. No, Cap told me. But the dispatcher said, we have got to get to the hospital, he interrupted. There's no time to wait for an ambulance. I spoke into the microphone. He says no? He can't say no, the man exploded. He's endangering the lives of everybody on board. Cap glanced at the radio in annoyance. Does this have an off button? It's very distracting. Uh, gotta go. Bye. I cut power to the set. To Cap, I wheezed. You sure you know what you're doing? Rain says you always know what you're doing when you're doing the right thing. About 60 seconds later, we heard sirens. Some kid in the last row made the identification. Cops! By the time I got back there, two police cruisers were on our, were on our tail lights flashing. One of them activated the outside speaker. Pull over to the side of the road. You better do it, Cap, I called. The cops are chasing us. His expression was hidden behind all that hair, but he crouched lower over the wheel. It was a wordless statement. It would take an M1 tank to stop us now. I hope this rain was a reliable source. If Cap was just talking about wet weather, we were all up the creek without a paddle. As we barreled across town in the direction of the hospital, the line of police cars continued to grow until we were leading a parade of seven black and whites and at least a couple of unmarked cars, vehicles. The kids on board were totally cowed. Except for the engine noise and Naomi's shouted directions, there was utter silence. We had to be the best behaved busload of kids in the history of Sea Average Middle School. I would have enjoyed the sight of so many people who had terrorized me being terrorized themselves, except that I was twice as scared as they were. By the time we pulled into the entrance of Metro East Medical Center, we looked like a scene from Thelma and Louise, with half the police department strung out in back of us in pursuit, sirens blaring. I could see nurses and paramedics diving out of the way as the big bus rocketed up the drive to emergency. Cap stomped on the brakes, and we squealed to a halt behind a parked ambulance. A whole lot of cruisers surrounded us on all sides. The hospital guys were angry at first, but as soon as they caught a glimpse of Mr. Rodrigo, they were all business. The fallen driver was rushed into the building on a stretcher. 
No sooner had the automatic door swallowed him up than the first officer stomped up the stairs of the bus. You're in a lot of trouble, kid. The police made Cap lie face down in the aisle while they cuffed his hands behind his back. It was like something out of an episode of Cops. They were treating him like a criminal, which I guess a school bus hijacker technically was. We watched in awe as they hauled him roughly to his feet and marched him out to a squad car. Naomi was the first to speak up. Cap didn't do anything wrong. He was just trying to save Mr. Rodrigo. The stunned passengers came alive at last. It started off as a rumbling of discontent, bubbling over into a chorus of outrage on Cap's behalf. Quit pushing the guy around. He's a hero. He didn't hit anything. The arresting officer wasn't buying it. Quiet, he bellowed. Now listen, I'm sending a patrolman in to drive the bus back to school. I don't want to hear a peep out of any of you in the meantime. A door slammed as Cap was locked in the back of a cruiser. It was a terrible moment and doubly terrible for me because I wasn't proud of what was going on in my head just then. Cap had just been arrested at gunpoint. Mr. Rodrigo was in danger of his life. And what was I thinking about? That if Cap went to jail, I would be back in business as the number one punching bag at Sea Average Middle School. I was a worm, but at least I had the strength of character to be ashamed of it. Pretty action packed today. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. We'll have to wait to see if Cap is unarrested again, right? All right, you guys take care. I'll see you soon.